Hey everyone, I'm Diana Davison, advocate for the falsely accused and wrongfully convicted. An important case has been dominating headlines this week. Feminist New York University professor Avital Ronell was recently found responsible for sexual harassment of a male PhD student named Nimrod Reitman and given a year suspension. It's now under dispute if it's a paid or unpaid suspension. And the basics of the case are this. Nimrod says that he was stalked, sexually harassed, sexually assaulted, and basically turned into Avital's boy toy after he was trapped into having her as his PhD thesis supervisor. Avital says Nimrod exploited her by choosing her as a supervisor, encouraged her to engage in ridiculous vocabulary, for example, calling him sweet companion prince and herself his cocker spaniel, then turning their coded language against her in a malicious complaint. She denies that she ever foisted herself upon him in any unwanted fashion. The case came to attention after outraged colleagues wrote a letter in Rennell's defense, saying that she was too esteemed, witty, and important to be treated so poorly. Simply, they feel that Rennell should not be put through a Title IX inquisition because she's somehow special. One signatory, Diane Davis, no relation to me, lamented that the Title IX process was a feminist tool that had been twisted and used against them. Davis's comment should not be under-examined. Rennell and her supporters have denounced the university tribunal system as a kangaroo court, and Davis says that it's a feminist tool. It's not a tool for justice, it's a feminist tool for, I guess, feminist goals. Now, I would like Davis to expound on that. Much of the conversation around Avital Ronell's situation has been focused on the hypocrisy of these feminist scholars. The main complaint from Ronell's supporters is that the university investigation was flawed and unfair. Well, I think we all agree that that is true, but Ronell's supporters have not called for the dismantling of these tribunals. They just want to limit who it's used against. Nimrod Reitman, the complainant, also found the Title IX inquiry to be unfair, as Rennell was not found responsible for his most serious accusations. Every tribunal case that I've studied has ended with both the complainant and the accused denouncing the fairness of the system. There's no reason to choose a side here. Can we not just all agree that these tribunals are a mockery of justice and just put an end to them? Now we turn to the problem of how these cases are tried in a court of public opinion versus in a proper court of law. The original details published online paint a dubious he-said-she-said said picture with sparse evidence reported on both sides. It's possible that the male student was making this complaint after he failed to launch his career, as Rennell says. Messages were cited in which the young man was using affectionate language and saying how much he missed Rennell's kisses. The young man claimed that he was forced to spend time with Rennell in her Paris apartment, forced to read poetry to her, and forced to lay next to her in her bed. All of this before he even attended New York University under her tutelage. These claims raise common questions. What does he mean by forced? Why didn't he cancel his agreement to work with her? How does he explain his messages to her saying that he loves and misses her? These are natural questions and asking them is not victim blaming. We want to know so that we can both understand his claims and figure out how to prevent abusive behavior like this in the future, if in fact it happened. I've now read Nimrod Reitman's statement of claim, filed a few days ago in court against Avital Ronell and New York University. Reitman not only answers those questions with a narrative, he punctuates his claims with numerous emails and voice messages. We don't have the benefit yet of Avital Ronell's response, and it's possible that she'll provide compelling evidence of her innocence. There have been a number of cases where once a trial takes place, the accused shocks the public with evidence that their accuser has lied. This is the importance of proper trials. Proper trials have rules of evidence. They have a judge presiding over how to properly weigh evidence. Making sure rhetorical tricks are not employed unfairly by a prosecutor or a defense lawyer. And here's the most important point. There is a defense lawyer in a proper court of law. In what could be called Twitter trials, any attempt to act as a defense lawyer results in condemnation and outrage. I'm denounced regularly as a men's rights activist simply for questioning accusations and telling people to be careful to hear both sides of the story. People defending Avital Ronell should not be mocked for supporting her and wanting her to get a fair hearing, though they should be denounced for denying others the same benefit. For me, I see a large number of people saying Ronell is being falsely accused. 
So I'm paying attention. It's possible that Nimrod Reitman has been malicious and conniving, as they say. I have seen his accusations as presented to a court of law, and I look forward to seeing Rennell's detailed reply. I don't hashtag believe anyone here. I don't take sides based on politics. The story has to be consistent, and where it varies from the expected, I want an explanation. When I read Reitman's lawsuit, I was shocked. It reads like a Stephen King novel, but he backed it up with evidence. The extent of the torture and abuse that Reitman describes doesn't just paint Rennell as a predator. It describes her as a very dangerous person, one who may pose a risk to other people in society. As such, this is definitely not a case that should have been put through a university tribunal. If what Reitman says is true, more punitive action should be taken. And this is why universities need to get out of the sexual assault investigation business. Completely. This is not just a situation where a man says that his female professor aggressively asked him out for coffee and he felt that he had to go on dates with her to get a good grade. This is a case where he claims he was terrorized by her for years, having his life and body overtaken by her demands and threats. Now, I'm open to Rennell's defense, but having read the full accusations, I can tell you she's got a lot of serious explaining to do. The reverse genders of the normal accuser and accused here is of great importance. It's an opportunity to clear the path for honest discussion without hyperbolic language or ad hominem attacks based in ideology. Defending Rennell can't be denounced as a patriarchal or misogynistic oppression. Reitman can't be accused of being a histrionic lying woman who's just crying rape. Because the genders are reversed, we have an opportunity to strip this discussion down to the important elements. That is the right to have a fair and impartial trial. And that's what I want for everyone. I'll put a link to Reitman's full statement of claim below.